Hello, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, so Daily Coaching will be hosting a number of uh, episodes where we will be talking about various things within the football industry. Um, and tonight I have Sean, um, the founder of We Make Footballers with us. Um, I'm going to let Sean basically talk about his business and the way he set it up um, and how he's run running in it. Um, and then um, we'll go into a few more questions around uh, how you may also potentially be able to use some of the ideas or models to um, help yourself if you're thinking of doing something similar. So um, without further ado, um, I introduce Sean. So um, Sean, good evening. Evening. Um, so Sean, just starting off then, um, what kind of made you want to start the We Make Footballers brand? And um, tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, sure. So back when I was kind of like 16, 17, I had it in my head that I was going to be a footballer, probably like most. Uh, actually, that's probably later than a lot of people. Like most people learn when you're like 13, 14, if you're not at an academy and not the level, then you kind of pursue something else. But I was a bit more stubborn and I was still kind of thinking I'd go down that semi-pro route. Um, but yeah, I started to think that, oh, okay, I need to have like a backup plan and start getting involved in coaching, started volunteering at my local club. And the guy who ran that club was a scout at Chelsea. And so I was watching how he was getting players signed. He had a very successful soccer school. This would have been maybe around 2005, 2006. He'd been doing it a long time. And yeah, he was get, he. He had very, very good teams, and yeah, he was very successful at getting players scouted. Um, but the thing, the issue that he had was that he was quite close. It was he wasn't necessarily able to separate the business from the grassroots club. Um, and then in the end, he, he, there was um, arguments and conflict between parents between the club that he was working at. And in the end, he then took away all the teams from this grassroots club and went and formed a new grassroots club. But where I'd been volunteering and I'd built up contacts and friendships um, and I was even playing for their first team um, for this local club at that point. I think I was about 18 at the stage, 18, 19. And then they asked me, would I start something new? Would I start up a new soccer school? And... I was like, yeah, they'd, get, they'd give me free reign of the ground. And I kind of thought, oh, it'd be easy. Yeah, you know, I'll just copy the same thing that this other guy did. Uh, but it wasn't easy. It was very hard. I started with two children the first week, uh, which I was horrified about. I thought that I was going to have hundreds of kids first week with my little bit of advertising. And, but, then, but then, yeah, two kids, two pounds per player. And then next week, got four players. The week after that, maybe I think we had six gradually just built it incrementally and and then yeah then and you know just got some good traction and it and it has really progressed from there that was that was kind of how I got into it all and that's how I got started okay nice sounds good and um would you say that having that sort of uh network of of contacts and also I suppose um having the sort of uh be it, well, being the role model that you was at that time um, helped you to sort of first initially attract people to come in along to you um, rather than potentially, you know, staying, staying where they was? Yeah. So, so at this sort of time, I was also a coach at a development center with Chelsea. Yeah. So that would have carried a certain amount of credibility. Um, I didn't get that through the, the other guy. It was, um, it was actually someone who lived on my road was the development officer at Chelsea. He was linked at that club. He liked the way that I coached and my manner. And so he invited me to volunteer with Chelsea. And I volunteered for Chelsea for a period of time. Then I got a job coaching at their development center. And so then, yeah, that, that definitely helped with bringing in customers with, with my reputation. But always like the way that, because you referred there to being a role model, I absolutely think that is important as a coach because I took playing very seriously. You know, I was aware that I hadn't come from an academy background. So I had to make up everything I could from eating as best I could and, and training hard. And I was, I was very, very dedicated to the sport. 
and so then that came through with my expectations of players that I coached so uh, that yeah that's that's always come through and I think parents have respected that because when the coach coaches that way with that kind of discipline and dedication then it sets good life skills not just for football coaching I think I think parents are drawn to that yeah no definitely totally agree with that and um, yeah I think like you said it's it's that attraction of what's going to make you stand out from all of the other things which are going on. And like you said, if obviously the parents can see that, then, you know, they almost have that element of trust with, with, with yourself as well. Um, Definitely. On, on that, you talk about sort of, um, you know, how, how you sort of initially set it up um, and obviously some of the experiences which you have had um, in the past and what you was currently doing at the time. Um, <clears throat> with that, would you say that there was a particular uh, model in terms of which you try to uh, create or which you have seen in the past and which you tried to use um, and with that would you say that you know obviously initially it was all done through yourself um, but how did you kind of get the support into sort of growing it up to you know potentially where it is now yeah yeah um, and I suppose to some people that don't know about our company our company has progressed now to a franchise with 3,000 children that I mean this is this is pre-coronavirus um but yeah you know as of as of three weeks ago we had the 3,000 subscribers who were attending classes every week with us and that's not including anything that we were doing in terms of after school clubs or McDonald's contracts that we have so yeah we have hit a good amount good scale at this point now with um, 28 franchise owners I'm working across the UK, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at working towards at some point going international, um, and yeah, it's it's probably come. It's I mean, it's been 12 years that I've now been doing it. So it would 2008 would have been when I first started coaching those two kids, and. I wouldn't say that there's like one moment where it first went, oh, wow, now it's just blown up. It's always been like incremental growth. Um, I, I think like I'd never planned on having a business. You know, this, this club, they said to me, look, we've lost all our players. Can you start something up again? Because we need a grassroots club at the moment. Now all we've got is an adult section and we need to get some new under sevens. So my first priority was just to get a group of under sixes together so that next year the club had some under sevens. Then when we did that, then I then had to go and get new under sixes, new under fives, and then you just build it all the way up from there. I knew nothing about business and I was making mistakes all the time. So I think like when I started to, when we had like a lot of kids and I started to see, be like, wow, okay, I, 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 there's quite a lot of responsibility on my shoulders here now. I need to maybe like educate myself. So I literally went to the local library, took out just all these books, and, and I was actually going on a holiday to Thailand that Christmas. So um, I took all these random books with me on accounting and business. And, and, then, and then, yeah, I just gradually just kept educating myself. And I think like I would always, the same way that I was as a player, where I would see a training idea and I'd say, oh yeah, that could work. And I would try and apply that to myself and I would see improvement. I approached that to business as well. And I kept taking ideas and implementing them in the business. And many of them would work. And I've just always kept doing that over time. And we've then drawn good people into the business. Around 2014, I paid a lot of money to get some mentorship from a very experienced business person. And he loved the concept, loved what we were doing, loved the direction, loved the passion. And he then came in and gave us some more structure. And he's the one who said we needed to franchise. Before that, we weren't even called we make footballers our name was actually called sports links okay and our strap line because we had so many players signed to academies he said look scrap that sports links name he said uh this we make footballers that that is a nice name that that that's catchy and people i think would get that and so th then then we changed the name and we structured ourselves and and then that's where we've kind of got to where we've got to now so yeah i wouldn't say it was one moment it was just mm -hmm. continual application Okay. No, that sounds, that sounds good. And again, kind of, um, well, it was going to be the next question, but you've kind of mentioned it there. And I, I think that's like, you know, such valuable information <laughs> in terms of obviously a lot of people who set up football businesses or clubs, you know, they have that sort of uh, football knowledge, understanding and background. 
But as like you've mentioned there, you know, especially like I said, to the level in which you've grown, we make footballers. You know, it's something a lot more than football in terms of obviously the values and and the messages all remain the same within the football elements of it. But like you said, it's a business now. So I was, the question what I was going to ask, like I said, you've kind of uh, mentioned some of it there was, you know, are there any other skills that you need within running a football business? I mean, obviously there you mentioned about, um, you know, taking the time, the money um, and the commitment to getting mentored um, and finding out this, you know, path of it can be more than just, you know, recruiting players. And actually, like you said, it's now recruiting coaches almost to franchise out to. Um, yeah. Which is which yeah. is really nice. Yeah, I I mean I'm addicted to listening to audio books now. I don't really get the time to read, and so I've pretty much always got audio books on every day. I probably I aim for about thirty hours a month, mm -hmm. and they're pretty much always business books. And yeah, I'll just always keep applying. And our team of people we've got around us at head office, they're the same. They're they're of the same culture and the same attitude always developing themselves and I think you have to take that responsibility I've I heard a phrase um, out learn out earn and okay. I, I, I kind of like that and yeah. uh, I think that yeah like you've identified like so many people in football are drawn towards the football side because that's what we love and we're good at as well but but you know that may not help you um, scale your business or, or kick on, um, you know, you can learn from the type of things they're doing in like Silicon Valley or, you know, like what, there's so many amazing um, entrepreneurs in all these different um, businesses that have, have scaled their enterprises and we can learn so much from them. So yeah, I, I do, as we've grown, I've, I've kept trying to understand what bigger businesses are doing um, to, to try and help educate myself and apply that in, into this business. But I 100% would advise that to people who uh, have football businesses. Don't, don't just be set on having a great product. Think about the other elements as well. Yeah, no, I totally think that makes sense. And, and I think, like you just said, the key point in terms of looking at other businesses, which may not necessarily be football, um, looking at entrepreneurs and seeing the ways in which they've developed things. And I've always kind of thought to myself that, you know, if you're a manager of a business or you're an owner of a business, you know, you, you have, again, like we said, I spoke about earlier in terms of um, your personal skills. So you know, being the role model, being the leader, um, taking the initiative, showing the time and effort and commitment to developing you as an individual. I think, you know, they're all key skills that can be sort of shared across the field, regardless of whatever business it's in. And obviously in having the background and, and the knowledge and understanding of football obviously links in well with the football business. But yeah, I definitely think that they're all key skills which are transferable. Um, so yeah, um, just a final couple. Um, so obviously, like I said, we've spoken about how you've, you've grown your business to where it is now. Um, and obviously, I know that um, through things which I've seen and through things which I've heard as well, you know, we make footballers are very big on um, social promoting um, and uh, you know, social media is a massive thing for yourselves. Um, how did you sort of uh, push yourself through social media in terms of the recruitment of players, but also um, in gaining those coaches to come in and potentially branch out into a franchise? How, how, how was your sort of approach with that? Yeah, so something um, that I didn't talk about was that it's helped a lot. Uh, back in 2010, 2011, I think it was, my brother and I, as well as the football business, um, but my brother and I, we formed a web design business. Okay. Um, so that, yeah, that ran along the same side as, as the football business. Um, but working for small businesses and we gradually scaled that and we've since both like, sh sold our shares in it in 2018. But the education we got from being involved in that business, we, we you know, we, firsthand we understood about digital marketing. So, yeah, we, we, we were able to advertise through social media and different parts of that, whether it was developing a brand, um, having a tone of voice, having a message, having a mission, pushing out our values. Hopefully that comes across in our social media. And I think because, you know, for, for me especially, you know, I'm so passionate. I'm like, 
I want England to win a World Cup. You know, that's like my dream. I'm just like so set on that. And I want to use what we have with women footballers to contribute towards that. And I think there's like so many people, I feel like in the last five, six years, there's just been this movement of, of so many people like myself, like so many like-minded individuals who are championing this change and this better way of teaching our children and coaching. And ultimately, because I kept pushing that message out through our digital platforms, it, it, it kind of like, yeah, just got in like-minded people who just saw our messages, saw what we are about. They were like, yeah, I, I love that. You know, I want to be involved with that. And then, you know, then, then we then talked them through the business model and showed them a business plan and said, look, well, it's not just this that is this great mission. It also is viable as a business opportunity. You could get into full-time football through being involved with us. This is how the business plan works. You know, you're going to have a territory. We believe that you're going to be able to, based on past data from the success of other franchises, you'll be able to get 100 students in your first year and you'll grow by 100 students every year after. And yeah, we've, we've, we've just done that. And, and that's what's kind of happened. There's, there's different ways that we've recruited those people, um, whether it's through yeah, being top of Google or having a nice website or whether it's through social media, whether it's just through network and recommendations. There's, there's various ways that come together. But I think that probably the main way is just a very strong core mission yeah, no, that makes that makes total sense. And um, you know, even just through listening to you and and, and sharing your experiences and uh, you know your sort of uh, ideas there, I think you know, for anybody who's listening and watching this, I think like you know, like I said, I see we make footballers is a brilliant model to follow in terms of you know how you want to create a business, with, especially within football. But as you just spoken about there, a business in general, um, and I think some of the key messages to kind of take away from this is you know having that football knowledge and understanding is one thing. Um, but, you know, investing in your yourself as an individual, first of all, um, and understanding how you're going to run a business, like you said, within the mission is crucial. Um, and then within that, people, again, kind of similar to what you spoke about earlier on in terms of the, the, the personality skills of being, you know, respected and being that role model, um, people buy into it. Um, and I think that's the same within players. I think often... You know, when you go along to a session, you're not a coach, you're a individual that that player has built a rapport with. Um, mm. You know, children have thousands and, and hundreds of coaches, but, you know, they enjoy coming to your sessions because that's who they built the rapport with. And I suppose it's very mm. similar to with your clientele um, and also with mm. the coaches which come along to you. So, yeah, that's that's massive. Um, just just final one then. Um, yeah, yeah. You kind of spoke about it a little bit and you know, even for myself, I'm interested to hear what you, you, you said or you mentioned a little while ago, but what does the future hold for We Make Footballers? So how do you see the business moving forwards or, or developing, obviously, um, post, post-corona? post um, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to get through this period. We have to yeah. come, come out of this, uh, whether, whether that's going to be September or as early as July, yeah. but you know, fingers crossed, we're back at school. September, the economy is 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 recovering and in a in a good place that you know we hope for. It's, it's you know so hard to predict the future right now, yeah. um, but you know let's let's be positive and optimistic that you know we'll, we'll go we'll go back to normal, and we will just continue on recruiting more franchisees people who want to get full-time in football they may be maybe working part-time in an academy but can't get a full-time career there maybe they've got another job that they dislike and they see that the business model with we make footballers fits with them and they see an opportunity in their local area and they want our support then you know we'll, we'll partner up with them um, you know we hope to have beyond 50 franchises in the UK and getting ourselves towards 20,000 students so a fair, fair amount of growth, um, but we have been, the, the past four years since we've been franchising, we've grown 50% every year. So we're still pushing for those targets. And we're currently speaking with people in China, Spain, America, and Saudi Arabia. And so, so there's yeah, four, four different places that 
um, yeah, obviously, yeah, so far away and, you know, um, so different from, from what we'd be used to in, in England. But yeah, we're, we, we want to, we think we've got a great product. I think England is, is now becoming one of the best places in the world for producing coaches and producing players. And I think that that does sell internationally. And I think we can keep spreading the good work that we're doing. Yeah, no, totally. And, and like I said, to be honest with you, I'm very excited to see the international approach as well. Um, I think that, you know, like I said, I've, from, from, from my own experiences of what I've heard of We Make Footballers and from what I've seen, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's a leading model definitely within, within the UK, um, not even just Thank regionally. You. So, um, yeah, so look forward to it. Um, but yeah, Sean, um, I won't take up any more of your time. Um, massive, massive thank you for taking part within this. Like I said, I think for anybody listening and, and viewing it, um, you know, it'll be massively beneficial to see and um, hear from what Sean's been saying, really, and uh, take it into your own practice, whether that's you're thinking of starting out a business or whether you've already got one and, you know, potentially you're looking at um, how you can expand it further or, or, or make changes. Um, Sean, do you just want to share some of your social media um, outlets just so that people can follow? Yeah, sure. Twitter and instagram are at we make footballers and i think the same thing for facebook as well that they're, they're the three and even youtube as well okay. yeah just we make footballers nice and simple yeah yeah no cool problem. all right and we'll yeah, all again right. massive thank you and um yeah, yeah. thank um, you for having me no problem and good luck in the uh the future future movements all right cheers dave cheers, cheers